All right, so time to learn about trigonometric ratios, or we call them trig ratios for short, and they um, apply to right triangles. And we're not gonna use the Pythagorean theorem because we're gonna be dealing with only one side um, and not two of the sides to find the third, as well as the angles within the right triangle. Okay, so first off, you've probably noticed on your calculator, there are some things that you've never used before. This sin, cos, tan button, okay? So we're going to start using these three buttons, and they're going to be your favorite buttons ever, okay? First off, this is not sin. It's called sine, okay? So if you see the word S-I-N, you're going to pronounce it sine, okay? And sine stands for opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, remember the hypotenuse is the side directly across from the right angle. That's called the hypotenuse HYP. Um, you will see it abbreviated O over H, okay? Cosine, not cosine. So you would pronounce this cosine. is going to stand for adjacent over hypotenuse. So you're going to see that abbreviated A over H, okay? Adjacent means touching, right beside each other, okay? Opposite is going to mean not, op or not adjacent, okay? And lastly, tangent, um, pronounced pretty much how it looks, represents um, opposite over adjacent, okay? So you'll see that O over A. Now, these are all talking about the sides of a triangle in relation to an angle. So what we're going to have to do is figure out what side's opposite, what side is the hypotenuse, which is probably the easiest, and then which side is adjacent, um, depending on an angle. So what mnemonic device can you use to remember this? So we've learned, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, to remember the order of operations. Um, you've learned cross, multiply, divide. Um, another way to remember this is so ka toa You want to soak your toe, soak your toa in uh, water if you stub it or something. So that is the cheesy mnemonic device, how to remember it. Um, it stands for sign is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's ways for you to remember that fraction. So, so, ka, toa. So you'll watch the video in a second and that will make more sense. Um, but let's look at how we use these problems. So first off, it's going to give me a triangle, and it wants me to find the trig ratios. Now remember, ratio is a fraction. Okay, so I want to leave this in a simplified fraction. This angle up here is called theta. It's just a Greek symbol for an angle. So if I want to find sine of theta, what I need to do is label opposite and adjacent and hypotenuse from theta. So this sign, or this side is going to be opposite. Okay, it's the farthest side away from that angle. And then, of course, this is your hypotenuse which means what's left is your adjacent. So that's how I name things. Because to me, it's easier to find the side that is opposite. It's the side that's not touching or making up the angle. Okay, so once you label it, then you can write your ratio. So I know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm gonna plug in my numbers and get 15 over 35. Now I just need to simplify that fraction. And I know each of those are divisible by 5. So if I divide the top and the bottom by 5, my ratio should be 3 over 7. Okay, and I'm done. I found the ratio of sine of theta. Now if I'm going to do cosine, I know cosine stands for adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to look at 7 over uh, 35. Now I know the numerator and the denominator are divisible by 7, so that would give me 1 over 5. So my ratio 
of cosine of theta is one fifth. Lastly, for a tangent, I know tangent stands for opposite over adjacent, and my opposite side was 15, my adjacent side was 7, um, and I know I can't reduce that fraction anymore, so that would be my ratio for tangent of theta, okay? So it's all depending on what angle you are at for labeling opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, but once you do that, not so bad. So let's look at one more example, and then y'all are going to try these over here. So notice it tells me I want to find the sine of C. So I need to look at angle C, and this is where I'm at. So I need to label opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So this will always be my hypotenuse, okay? And then 12 is going to be opposite, which means 5 is adjacent, okay? So if I'm looking for sine... I know that is opposite over hypotenuse, so I would need to do 12 over 13. That cannot be reduced. I am done. Okay. So now I'm actually going to erase all this because it wants me to find cosine of B. I'm going to leave hypotenuse there. Um, so now I'm at angle B, and I need to find adjacent over hypotenuse because that's what cosine means. So I know 13 will always be the hypotenuse. But now what side is adjacent to B? Well, 3 is opposite, which means that this 12 is adjacent. And it kind of runs into that side of a B. So it's going to be 12 over 13. So what you notice is cosine of C can be the same, or sine of C can be the same as cosine of B, okay? Since you're dealing with two different angles. Um, I'm staying at B for tangent, so I'm going to leave that label. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite of B is going to be 5. Adjacent to B is going to be 12. Cannot reduce that fraction. That would be my answer. Um, so now I'm going to be dealing with angle C. So I'm going to kind of erase this. Now I'm going to be looking at angle C. So this is now opposite, and this is now adjacent if I'm at angle C. So if I want cosine, cosine is opposite, nope, adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of C adjacent would be 5, hypotenuse is 13. Okay, those can be reduced. And then tangent of C. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so opposite is 12, adjacent is 5, and those cannot be reduced, okay? So that is how you find um, ratios given the angle. Now you will always be given the angle, so you can label opposite and adjacent and hypotenuse. So why don't you try these? Find the tangent of A, sine of B, and cosine of A. Um, leave them as a fraction and press pause and we'll go over the answer. We summed you on tangent of A and cosine of A because you cannot use the right angle um, to find a ratio because you don't really know what, they're both adjacent and then your opposite is your hypotenuse. So didn't mean to trick you on that one, but wanted to throw it out there. So you could only find the sine of B and so you would do opposite, which is 5, over hypotenuse, which was 13. Okay, so again, you can only do um, sine, cosine, and tangent from the angles that are not the right angle, okay? All right, moving on to trig inverses. So if we look at our calculator, we see above the sine, cosine, and tangent button are sine, negative 1, cosine, negative 1, tangent, negative 1. Okay, those are the inverse operations. So think about how addition and subtraction are inverse operations, and multiplication and division, and a squared and a square root. Okay, this is just another way of inverse for trigonometry. So remember with equation, oh, I just said that, okay. <laughs> All right, calculator problems, hashtag. So this is how you will get the problem wrong. You have to make sure your mode, which is right here, is in degrees, okay? We're going to be dealing with angles, and if your calculator is not in mode degree, your answer will be wrong. And your mode degree is not set usually. So you need to go over and hit enter, 
and then your calculator is now in degree, okay? So that's how you change it under the mode button. Let's quit out of that. So when you're doing trig, make sure you are in degrees and not radians, okay? All right, so I want to find the value of x in degrees. So what I need to do is to find what this angle is, which is x, I need to get rid of cosine. So the inverse of cosine is cosine negative 1. So if I do it to the left side, I'm going to do it to the right side. Okay? So then cosine and cosine inverse will cancel out, and I'm left with x equals. Now how you would write that is cosine negative 1 of square root of 3 over 2. Okay? Once we do that, we're going to type it in the calculator. So let's pull up our calculator button. So it's in blue, so you're going to hit second, cosine, square root, 3. Uh, I'm going to close that off, actually. And then divide it by 2, and I would get 30. So that's going to be 30 degrees. Okay. All right, let's look at sine. So the opposite of sine is going to be a sine inverse. So sine negative 1, do it to both sides. You would get x equals inverse sine, or sine negative 1, of a half. Okay. So I'm going to type that in the calculator. Again, I'm going to hit second uh, sine. I'm going to type in a half. Close it off. And I get 30 degrees. So cosine of this number and sine of that number are the same thing, which is cool. Last one, let's look at tangent. Again, the inverse of a tan is tan negative 1. So do the tangent inverse on both sides, and you will get inverse tan of a 1. So when I inverse tan and hit second tan and type in a 1, close it off, 45 degrees. So my x is going to equal 45 degrees. Okay. So if you are looking for a degree, and you know you're looking for a degree because um, a degree always has to be in the parentheses. So if you're given a sign, which is what these are, to find the inverse, you take the inverse, type it in, get a number which is in degrees. Don't forget to make sure your mode is in degrees. Okay. All right, why don't you try, that should say tangent, I don't know why it doesn't, um, of 1, 2, and the middle one, and then we'll go over the answer. So press pause and try this on your own. You should have gotten 60 degrees for every single one of those, okay? Um, again, let me know if you have any questions, but this is what my calculator looked like. I did the inverse tan, cosine, and sine. And I type them in. Again, your calculator might look different. I had to put parentheses. Um, but that's how you find the inverse of something, okay? So that is how you find trig ratios and inverses. Time for a joke. Um, sine b over tan b equals cos b. Ha 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 ha. Okay, how it makes sense. <laughs> um, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So remember when you're dividing fractions, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to make that o, A over O. And then when you multiply, go by O's, and you would get A over H, which is cosine of B, a.k.a. cos B. So that's how it works out. Okay. So thanks for watching, trig ratios. Um, more than welcome to practice. Thanks for watching.